Great Grand Prix, here's Spain, 1981. Jack Lafitte was in pole position. Didn't stay there for very long because Alan Jones in the Williams took the lead from Lafitte. Villeneuve, meantime, in the turbocharged Ferrari, had moved up from fifth on the grid to third on the grid. Alan Jones led the race for the first 14 laps. And then... That is Alan Jones. Alan Jones leading the Spanish Grand Prix is in the flag. And that is at the end of the fast race at Nubilari. You're looking at the change situation now. Villeneuve leads. We didn't expect him to stay there very long. Although Villeneuve's car was incredibly quick on the straights, he was literally leading a crocodile of cars. Jacques Lafitte was there, John Watson was there, Carlos Reutemann was there, Elio De Angelis was there. If they could have got past Villeneuve, they would have been able to pull away from him. But Gilles was very sensible indeed. He came out of the corners pretty slowly, but then he put his foot down and punched home with the turbo power and pulled away from all the rest of them. He got such a lead that the others couldn't catch up until right at the end of the lap, by which it was too late. And when they came out of the last corner, Villeneuve was still the leader. Right behind him was Jacques Lafitte. Right behind him was John Watson. Right behind him was Carlos Reutemann. Right behind him was Elio De Angelis. And that's the way it finished. 1.2 seconds covered the first five homes. And Villeneuve in the Ferrari wins from Lafitte, Watson, Reutemann and De Angelis, the Spanish... We'd never had a race finish as close as that before, and I'd be surprised if we had one again. Drama in Portugal, 1984. Prost, by the time of the Portuguese Grand Prix, had won six Grand Prix that year. Niki Lauda had won five. This was the last race of the year. It was going to decide the World Championship. Nelson Piquet was in pole position, but he spun out on the first lap. Then Nigel Mansell took over, and he had brake trouble to go out of the event. And the story of the race was that Prost dominated it once those two people had dropped out. But crafty old Nicky Lauda was calmly picking drivers off one by one, knowing if he just finished in second place, he would win the World Championship. And that is exactly what happened. Nicky Lauda has moved up into second position. And there he is. There is the World Champion of 1984. Sensation at Silverstone, 1987. Go! Like so many of the great races that I've seen, it featured, and did it feature, Nigel Mansell. And in 1987 at Silverstone, there was action with a capital A, I can tell you. It seemed to be a foregone conclusion that one of the two Williams drivers was going to win the race. Nelson Piquet, world champion, and Nigel Mansell were the two drivers. And they did not like each other at all. On lap 35, Nigel Mansell unexpectedly came into the pits, changed all four tyres and wheels, and took 28 seconds before he was back in the race again. 12 laps to go, Nelson Piquet's tyres started to go off. He was still on the original set of tyres, don't forget, and Nigel Mansell was on a new set. And Nigel went quicker and quicker and quicker, broke the lap record time after time. The British crowd, seeing their British hero, were going absolutely mad with excitement, almost at the end of the race. Lap 63, Nelson Piquet was in trouble. His tyres were starting to go off. From 28 seconds behind, Nigel Mansell was right in the wheel tracks of Nelson Piquet and Nigel Mansell's fuel gauge was reading zero. Oh! And Mansell's through. Out he goes! Mansell has won the British Grand Prix! Nigel Mansell won the British Grand Prix and ran out of fuel on the last lap, surrounded by thousands of adoring fans. It was incredible. Magical Monaco, 1992. There is nowhere else like Monaco. And of all the Monaco Grand Prix that I've seen, the one that has to stand out in my mind is 1992. And one of the reasons, unsurprisingly to me, was Nigel Mansell. And he was up against, particularly, his great rival Ayrton Senna, 
in the McLaren. Now, Senna had already won the Monaco Grand Prix four times. Nigel had never won it. And from laps one until 70, out of 76 laps, Nigel was commandingly in front until he got a puncture coming out of the tunnel. He thought. He came into the pits. He changed all four tyres and wheels. Senna took the lead. But he was now on new tyres. Senna, after 72 laps, was on tyres that were getting very tired indeed. And very quickly, Nigel, breaking the lap record, closed right up behind Ayrton Senna. They have done so. Ayrton Senna has got to keep Mansell behind him for three whole laps. And, and those three laps, for me, were absolute magic because Nigel tried to the left, tried to the right. He would have gone over the top of Senna if he could have done it, and there was indeed no way that Nigel could get past. And Ayrton Senna, in 1992, won the Monaco Grand Prix for the fifth time. Nigel hadn't won and never did win at Monaco. World Championship Drama, Japan, 1994. Suzuka is the only circuit in the world that has a figure of eight configuration where part of the course goes under another part of the course. And Damon Hill was the man to watch because he'd taken over the team leadership of the Williams team after his team leader, the great Ayrton Senna, had been so tragically killed at Imola. And at Suzuka, it was wet. It was wet, wet, wet. When the race began, cars were spinning off all over the place. Michael Schumacher was leading Damon Hill when the red flag came out on lap 15 out of 50 to stop the race. The conditions were so bad that they felt it was dangerous to go on. And when the race restarted, Michael Schumacher was 8.6 seconds ahead of Damon Hill with 37 laps still to go. At 40, the Benetton people, thinking that the race would be stopped early, gave Michael Schumacher an advantage by bringing him in for his second pit stop. They expected the race to stop. It wasn't stopped. And Damon Hill, he drove superbly, in spite of the fact that he was under colossal pressure with Michael Schumacher closing up lap after lap after lap. The decision was going to be made on the time of the first part and the time of the second part put together. As Damon Hill crossed the line, I said, Hill wins by 3.3 seconds. Fantastic. 3.36 seconds. Damon Hill wins the Japanese Grand Prix.